important on employee feedback uh, using Office 365 apps. So in this session, we'll actually be using Office 365 apps such as SharePoint, uh, Forms, Power Automate, and, and uh, Power BI, and things like that to actually build a usable Office um, and employee feedback system on the back of Net Promoter Score uh, methodology. So my name is Jag Kakarlapuri. I'm the founder of the Modern Work Group uh, here in Melbourne, Australia. So uh, through my business, we actually uh, help work with businesses maximize their return on investment uh, on Office 365 platform through deploying business solutions and also solution-based uh, user training. With that said, uh, before going into the actual uh, talk itself, I wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which uh, this conference has been held and, and like to pay my respects to elders past, present and future. Also, I uh, just wanted to share with you a quick uh, code of conduct uh, um, to support the conference. Uh, so uh, organizers, uh, the presenters like myself and others, and, and the sponsors have taken a great effort and time um, and energy to put this together for you. So just be nice to each other and uh, respect each other. And, uh, and uh, let's uh, um, share what we know and uh, and then take, take it from there. So, uh, Let's go into the talk itself. So the plan of action for today's talk is around building the employee uh, feedback system, right? So before actually looking at how to build it, I just wanted to share a few ideas on why you should build it in the first place and 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 what's required for you to build it, like you know, uh, like the net net promoter score system and so on. And then in um, and then we'll actually jump onto a demo and uh, show you some of the um, the actual function of the employee feedback system end to end uh, and also share some key takeaways and at the end of the session i'm more than happy to and uh, answer any questions and feedback um, you may have so if you have any questions and uh, uh, and feedback please do share that in the chat um, uh, and and uh, i'll get to that at the, at the end of the session so let's get on with the the uh, the actual uh, talk itself. So why do you need to build an employee feedback system in the first place for your business itself? So uh, I've been uh, I've been working with a lot of businesses. Uh, uh, and not most of them actually have uh, an employee feedback system. If some do, they actually put up a, a, a survey together using some third party tools and things like that as when they already have an Office 365 license and things, right? Um, and sometimes they don't even bother asking for employee feedback. Uh, they they uh, they do a lot of, uh, you know, feedback surveys for for projects or for customers and surveys and or especially in a customer service industry uh, you do actually have a feedback survey right when you when you sell a product or when you provide a service and so on so the same methodology has been taken into 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 in-house and actually can support your employees as well so uh, just uh, a, a survey done on uh, how, you know why you need employee feedback is 59 percent of employees don't actually recommend the current workplace because they have concerns. They they have some, uh, you know, they don't like uh, working there or they don't like something about, you know, the team or, you know, they could have other issues and things like that. So it is as a man, as it is, it is important for the management and the HR and the people and culture teams to actually know why people are uh, are not recommending you, your, your organization as, as a good workplace to start with. And especially it supports uh, to keep, uh, you know, doing an employee feedback uh, program in your in your workplace supports uh, with your employee attrition rates to keep them low, right? It usually takes 20% of a person's annual salary to replace them. And that's actually a big, um, big chunk of money. Uh, uh, and, you know, if you, if you have a proper employee feedback system and if you start to work on employee feedback, it actually improves your bottom line. Uh, it's not just about improving the bottom line itself it is also about the productivity as well so if your employees are more motivated if your employees are engaged if they are loyal to your brand it is um, proportionate proportionately they'll be more productive as well so uh, so the our objective is to make sure that our employees are, are loyal and happy so that they can be more uh, so they can recommend your organizations for others and they can be more productive and improve your bottom line as well so how do we uh, actually do that is uh, is just a a, a a you know there's three uh, there's three main things that you need to take into consideration to in order to incorporate a good employee feedback system in your organization it is three a's ask analyze and act so you need to regularly ask your employees for feedback 
it's not just a once off exercise it is about making sure that you know you regularly keep uh, touch base with your employees to say to see how they're going you know see to see how their well being is you know uh, along with asking a, a and and make it a consistent practice and have a structure to that and the, that's where the the employee net promoter score comes in to be, you know to add structure to your feedback system i've seen few people uh, especially with the current crisis i've seen some organizations starting to actually send feedback forms to their employees and asking for feedback you know how are you guys doing and things like that especially now that everyone is actually working remotely uh, there's no face to face interaction or you know you don't see that per, in, per, in person uh, interaction so it is hard for uh, hr or to your management teams to gauge the 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 uh, the well-being of an employee or you know to see how motivated they are and things right so it is important for you at this stage to really have a structured program for employee feedback in your organization so make sure you ask for feedback and the next thing is it's not just about asking for feedback and then sitting on it right it's about analyzing it as you start to ask more often and you start to analyze how the trends are happening in your organization you can start to act on them so act on them as in like you know you can actually go um if if someone's actually not happy about something you can actually talk to them about like why are they not happy you know how can they how can you as an organization how can you as a management team how can you as a, as a as a manager a reporting manager how can you improve to make your employees life easier to to conduct their work and be more productive so it is about asking analyzing and acting so let's see how uh ENPS can support us in that uh, in that in that uh, journey right so the ENPS actually stands for employee net promoter score it is a key measure of employee sentiment about your organizations it doesn't need to be just about like a holistic sentiment about organization as a wide you can actually use the same principles for your you know a particular task that you're doing or a particular concept that you're running uh, around especially for example we worked with a customer recently just to see how they're actually how their how their employees are are uh, dealing with remote work for example so you could use the ENPS for that as well it is about employee sentiment and uh, as i said it brings a bit of uh, it brings a nice structure to your employee feedback rather than just asking about you know are you are you okay are you are you happy you know do you like this do you don't like this you know rate us uh, and things like that it it just actually brings um, a, a structure which is like you know employees get to score you uh, from a 0 to 10 on a 0 to 10 rating 10 being you know they extremely likely to recommend you zero being not so much right um so based on the 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 rating that you get from each employee the employees are put into into three different categories they are either treated as detractors neutrals or promoters so let's look at each of these categories of uh, yeah, employees in 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 bit more detail right starting with promoters promoters are the ones that are are your best friends to be honest you know these are people who are like you know scoring you at 9 and 10s uh, these are you know these people are highly engaged and enthusiastic about it so you can actually talk to them again it's not mean meaning that they're already happy doesn't mean they can actually uh, become disgruntled at a later stage so what you can do is you know talk to them about like you know why they have scored um uh, nine and ten and learn from that and and probably take those learnings and implement that with the other categories of people um so along with when you run when you, when you go into the demo you'll actually see me uh put the demo uh, form together and in that form it's not just about asking for that um that rating in along with the rating you ask a question about why did you give us that score you know why do you rate us uh, so uh, either it's high or low so uh, your promoters are the ones who actually recommends your organization at a great uh, place to work with, right? If you have a referral program that you wanted to run, you know, if you know who your, who your promoters are, you can actually have a, a referral uh, in a job referral program uh, along with your promoters to, to, for them to promote it on the social channels or uh, along with their close circles and things like that. Then you have uh, neutrals. Neutrals are the ones who scored you in a seven and eight. These people are still productive and engaged, uh, but they don't really are not enthusiastic people, right? So they are enthusiastic about the actual workplace itself, uh, not not generally enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, these people usually recommend your organizations, but at a satisfactory levels only. So you can still work with them and see how you can actually transition them into into the promoters group, and that's the reason why we need to keep tracking. The uh, the feedback over a period of time. You know, usually the 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 you get maximum benefit of you have running an employee feedback program um, by you know tracking how how your employees are are scoring you uh, 
either monthly or quarterly or you know half yearly and th things like that right so in my view especially to support crisis management at the moment run it mon monthly and we'll see that in our demo today as well then you have this uh, detractors you know anyone who's code uh, six or less are treated as uh, are, are detractors these people are you know disengaged they have complaints Again, you need to know about what the, what those complaints are, you know, um, and 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 talk to them about what what those complaints are if they've agreed to actually share their contact information with you. Speaking of which, which um, always make sure that you run these employee feedback uh, program uh, anonymously. So don't ask them. Don't uh, we'll actually see that in the in the demo as well and how to do that. Uh, but give them a, a make it a hybrid approach where you can actually it is anonymous, but give them an opportunity to share their contact details if in case they wanted to talk to you. So these people are usually considering uh, to leaving the organization when a better opportunity ar arises, right? So by actually having that feedback program, uh, you can actually know who the detractors are. At least you can put in put in uh, programs in place to actually support uh, people to move the people in the detractor group uh, and, and, and move them across into neutrals and promoters. So based on uh, once you get those ratings, the the way it is uh, the it is cal the 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 actual score is calculated for that um, uh, for that batch or for that period is is you you've, you've uh, subtract the percentage of detractors from the percentage of promoters. So you take in that in that uh, time span, like say we're doing a monthly monthly feedback uh, batches. If that's the case, you're going to say in that month how many are your detractors you know what percentage of our detractors and what percentage are promoters and you 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 subtract the percentage of detractors from promoters and that will give you a score anywhere between minus 100 to 100 okay um, that's how you actually track um, uh, your ENPS scores it's the same thing have same thing for customer net promoter score system as well um, so uh, the only difference being employees you just run this program internally uh, and you know, for customers, you run this out outside the net, outside your organization, right? Uh, speaking of the scores, you know, any scores which are more than ten are considered to be good generally, based on some benchmark studies that are done uh, by by you know some companies. So the, here is an example of a benchmark uh, survey run through uh, by Perceptive in 2018. Uh, you can actually see the NPS scores based on at a based at in uh, ENPS scores based on uh, industries. Mm -hmm. So you can see that in agriculture sector, usually the it, it's it's a it's a good um, benchmark, uh, 33 per, 33 as a score, and you can also see that retail and mining and finance are lagging behind with minus scores. So the scores uh, can be anywhere between minus 100 and 100. So uh, before actually jumping on with that, uh, with that said, I just wanted to go and, and, and showcase a demo and, and show you how I've actually built this, uh, um, the employee feedback system. Before doing that, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for, and organizers for putting this uh, month long event together. Um, so uh, speaking of sponsors, uh, we actually have a weekly uh, competition that we're running as part of this uh, month-long conference. Um, so why don't you go ahead and scan that QR code uh, uh, to enter the competition for this uh, week one? I'll take a quick pause and uh, you, while you're doing while doing the scanning, if uh, if if you if you can also go on to m365may.com uh, to access the, the 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 form to to enter the competition as well. Make sure you read the competition and uh, competition rules while you're there. Um, so don't fill in the form yet. Uh, just have it open in your phones and uh, you can get to it once we finish the actual talk uh, in, in, in a few more minutes. Uh, with that said, if everyone's uh, scanned it, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's go into the actual demo itself. So uh, we've been working with the customer and uh, what we've done is we've actually built a a, a remote work central uh, portal inside uh, their uh, in, inside their uh, intranet, right? Uh, this is just a sample of that um, uh, in my demo environment. And here you can actually see uh, the the purpose of this remote uh, work uh, com community of the central is to actually you know uh, to provide the required information for your organization, for your employees who are working remotely with the latest information and have access to the leadership updates and things like that, and also have access to the, the remote work toolbox and resources, 
you know, they need to, um, you know, there's a lot of information spread all over the place on the internet. Instead, you're just trying to collate all of that and and present that in 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 a in a in a, in a centralized platform for your employees to uh, get their remote work done. And one of the business functions of that remote uh, work toolbox is the employee feedback form. So uh, before we go to get into the feedback form, I just wanted to show you uh, a bit about this remote work portal is, you know, it doesn't need to be in, in uh, it doesn't need to be in the SharePoint as in like, you know, it, people have to go in and access the internet. What you can do is uh, because now with, with the remote work, you know, a lot of people are actually on Microsoft Teams a lot. So what we've done is we've actually created an app and promoted and pinned the app to the app carousel here. So that people can actually get to, uh, uh, you know, get to see that, uh, get to access the remote work central right from within the Teams interface itself. So if you have an internet, you could do essentially the same thing as well. So uh, from here, I'm just going to go ahead and click on employee feedback. And what that will do is it will actually open up the feedback form uh, in, in Microsoft uh, Forms. So here you can actually see there's only four questions, right? So that's one of the uh, the best practices of building this feedback program together is minimize the number of questions you ask. You know, just ask those questions which you think will actually are required to make an impact. Along with those questions, um, include the, the net promoter score uh, question type as well. As you can see here, this form is about remote worker feedback form. It is about how are you faring as part of your remote work. So here I can say, are you able to get your work done while remote working? In this case, let's uh, let's just fill in a sample form. I, let's say I'm struggling with actually working remotely. And here you're going to say, how likely are you to re recommend the remote work program here at Modern Work, that organization? In this case, uh, uh, for demo purposes, I'm just going to say, I'm going to give a five. Yeah. And I'm going to, uh, and it's asking for a reason. Remember I told you just ask the reason for that score. So here I'm just going to say, uh, what's the reason? Um, be asked to jump a lot of video calls, something like that, you know, just uh, uh, I've, I've starting to notice that, you know, we are actually having a lot more meetings than we normally do when we have and um, uh, when we work at, at, at our workplaces, right? So I'm just giving that. And in this case, I'm going to say, yes, I would like to, you know, share my contact details to discuss uh, your feedback. So as you can see, when I selected yes, there's a bit of branching happening here, and it's asking me for for email address. If I don't fill in that email address, the person who is actually collecting the responses wouldn't know who this person is. So here I'm going to put in my uh, something like that. So that has as simple as submitting a, a quick form, right? So now what happens is once you've done that, I'm just going to go back here. And you can actually see that uh, this remote work community is, is I've got three people here and I've got an email notification saying that employee wants us to uh, talk to you. So we'll talk, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a second, but let's actually go ahead and look at uh, the actual responses itself. So if for you to, uh, in MS forms, for you to go back and see those uh, responses, all you have to do is just go into the group forms, go to the feedback uh, form, go into the response, too many clicks, right? So what you can do is inside SharePoint, you can actually use the forms web path and you can actually showcase the um, the form itself or the actual responses too. So in this case, you can actually see uh, of my NPS score based on my uh, rating it's already calculated as minus 20 just for that particular response there right um so now again like tying back to what i said previously about you know collect this score over a period of time you need to make sure that you know um have a consistent like you know have that score calculated for that entire month or quarter or off yearly so we'll look at we'll look at that in a second so the, the way that you're actually seeing the responses inside the SharePoint, uh, you can also do the same thing with the with the Teams interface as well. So next up is let me actually go ahead and submit another response right from within my intranet, from within the SharePoint interface itself. So the same experience, uh, rather than you having to go into a feedback form, you can actually do that from right here as well. So I'm going to support a, a positive one this time. I'm going to give it a 10, why not? And in this case, I'm going to say, uh love the flexibility of working from home no more commutes or something like that 
I actually use my commute time for sleeping, but just don't tell my manager that. Um, so do you like to share your contact details to discuss your feedback? In this case, I'm just going to say no and click submit. That's about it. So you have seen two different uh, um, uh, entry points. So you can actually have multiple entry points for that uh, collection of responses. So do that in Teams, do that in SharePoint, and let it be as part of uh, send, a, send a link to the actual form directly so that they can actually open it up, open it up on their mobile phones and, and, and fill in the form. So uh, now that we've collected the feedback, let's go ahead into the actual forms itself and actually see what we've done here. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've, I wanted to show you three things here. One is the actual question type. So if I just go ahead and say cut it new and click under click this more question types and you actually see this is the net promoter score question type that was actually added uh, maybe a year or 18 months ago into forms. So there's you already have a, 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 a net promoter score. Uh, capability built into your form. So why not use that rather than going and procuring a third party solution, right? So use the the existing question type and that automatically calculates the responses for you and, and showcases that. The next thing is uh, I've, I've done a bit of uh, branching as well. So here you can actually see if I just go to branching, you can actually see that uh, it's saying that do you like to share your contact details? If, it's, if I say yes, it's actually showing the uh, the fifth question. If not, it's going to end the form. So have a bit of branching in there too. Uh, and and it's not rocket science just to put this form together. It's just that you need to know that uh, what you can actually use it to. Um, so next is uh, when you go into the actual settings. So make sure that you know because it is an employee net promoter score form. Make sure that uh, you enable this option which says only people in my organization can respond. If somebody actually sends this form out uh, to to someone else, you know they won't be able to respond to. So uh, it is still uh, authorizing you to log in, but it's not going to track. Uh, you know when uh, when you see the responses, you won't actually see who's actually filled in. So for that, what you need to do is you need to untick this record name option. And that's about it to make sure that it's a, a an anonymous within the organization form. If you want to do the same thing and build a customer net promoter score system, you know, make sure that you select anyone with the link and respond and send that through your normal communication channels through your to your customers. So those are the three things that I wanted to show you from a forms perspective is use the existing question type for net promoters, uh, net promoter score, uh, use a bit of branching in there uh, to, you know, to collect contact details. But just the important thing is make sure that you select only people in my organization can respond and untick the record name option. So that's uh, that's just a quick overview of the of the actual uh, form building itself. So the next thing what I wanted to do is, you know, when we've collected the form, it is important for you to track and analyze the data, right? So what we've done is uh, just going back here, uh, we've used a Power Automate uh, flow um, to collect that feedback uh, from uh, using the flow from the forms to into SharePoint. So here is a feedback list that we have in here. And here you can actually see that the feedback is being collected in batches. So for this example, I'm actually collecting it on a monthly basis. Sometimes people do quarterly as well. So here, based on the score, it is actually doing a bit of, um, you know, column formatting to show me whether someone is a promoter or a detractor or neutral and so on. Along with this, what you have is you can actually, once it's coming into SharePoint, you can actually have other custom metadata to actually say, have you, this person has said they wanted to have, talk to you. Have you organized a video call? So you can say, yes, I've organized a video call and take notes along that call. So it is important for you to put all of that information in a central location so that you can actually look at trends and analyze the data and take the right decisions to support your employees. So that's how uh, you, you get the uh, information into, into, this, um, into this feedback list. So let's look at the flow on how we've actually built that. So just uh, this is the flow that we're using called the record remote worker feedback. If I just go in here, open that up. It is very simple flow. Uh, it is it is using one of the existing templates where it says when when new response store uh, when new form submitted store responds in SharePoint. But we've done a bit more uh, additions to it. So as in like you can you can actually see get response and then create an item in SharePoint very straightforward. Uh, what you have here is is your NPS category check. So based on the response details, you're checking what category they belong to. Very straightforward again. And remember that we said 
you know, are you struggling or, uh, you know, are you finding it harder to work from home and remote work and things like that? Based on those responses and if they have selected, uh, if they wanted to be contacted, we are actually sending, uh, you know, um, email notifications back to the person and also to back to their, to their manager as well. So you can add a, add a bit of uh, conditional logic in there to, to based on the selections of the responses, you can actually send and route the emails or even you know send team notifications as well so in this case we are sending a um, email notification and here you can actually see that it says employee john at modernwork.cloud you know the the first uh, form that i've submitted in the demo needs some assistance with remote work can you please reach out to uh, uh, on ms teams and and make uh, and and speak to the employee so you know, having especially now that we're all working remotely, it is important for us to have that video, one-on-one uh, -on -one video interaction going on as well. So that's why uh, it's it's uh, it's created a task for that particular person. Here you can actually see now the employee, uh, the manager can go have that meeting and take the 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 video call notes and and update that here in the central location for for the HR or the leadership team to come and have a look at how how, how things are progressing. So that's very straightforward from that flow point of view. But the thing is, it's uh, I have another flow here. What it does is, uh, this flow actually runs uh, at a a monthly regular a monthly interval, which actually goes and collects all those responses, uh, and 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 calculates the the over the 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 overall NPS score for that month. So here is the uh, the flow that, and here you can actually see this flow is actually uh, again very straightforward. Uh, you know, you're getting the items from that list, the SharePoint list, and and doing the and doing a bit of math, and based on the formula that we've selected, and it's it's storing that, uh, storing that employee record in uh, in uh, sorry the the ENPS record the score uh, for that month. Let me go ahead and actually bring up the the actual monthly scores list where you have you know scores tracked by month. The last one that we had was for April. If I go and run this flow now. I'm just running this uh, manually here, but it is actually a shed scheduled uh, flow, so it can actually run uh, automatically at a, at, uh, like a, at, at a at a monthly interval. So now, if I come back in here, if I just refresh this, I see a new entry being created for May 2020. Here you can actually see uh, from all the responses in May 20. If I just go back to my form here, the feedback list form. For, for month of May, you have six, you have uh, promoters and detractors and so on, right? So here, if I just go back in here, you can actually see for month of, I uh, have three promoters, zero neutrals and three detractors. Based on that, it's calculated my score to be zero. So as I said, uh, the scores can be anywhere between minus 100 to 100. So zero is right in the middle there because I've got three and three, right? Um, so that's how you would calculate the score for that for that month. Uh, it, now you know you wanted to probably share these results with uh, your management teams, or maybe you wanted to share them with uh, the rest of the organizations as well. So using uh, using Power BI, uh, what we've done is we've created a a report, and uh, which actually shows you uh, how we are actually tracking with the NPS scores. And uh, Power BI is actually on a schedule to refresh the data. That's why I don't see the latest data straight away. Uh, it'll take some time. But you get the idea around, you know, you're showing you're showing how you're tracking from ENPS at on a at, for a, at a monthly basis, and what's the current score uh, as well in the last 30 days. And uh, if especially if you're actually showcasing this report for uh, for your management teams, you may want it to show the num total number of detractors versus total number of neutrals and promoters as well. Maybe you don't want to uh, showcase this if you're if you're sharing the report with the with the rest of the organization because you don't want to share how many are detractors and how many are and neutrals and so on. Some, but uh, in order for you to have a Power BI report, uh, you need to share, publish the Power BI report either here in 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 SharePoint or inside Teams. You need to have a, a pro license or a premium license. So. Uh, some 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 organizations don't uh, like to have power pro licenses and wanted to limit the number of uh, Power BI licenses. So what they do is we can actually have an a similar but not exactly same uh, report using Excel. So here you can actually see uh, you can actually see that uh, the 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 information from that SharePoint list uh, the 
sorry, the actual monthly scores is actually uh, coded into an Excel uh, into an Excel sheet, and then you can actually create a, a, a chat inside Excel and use the file view of a part to actually showcase that. Using Excel, there's few gotchas because especially if you're if you're showcasing the the results uh, on a SharePoint page, the backend query doesn't get refreshed automatically. So you have to go open up Excel every month and then op uh, and refresh the data for it to show the latest information. So that's pretty much it from uh, from the demo po point of view. Um, I'll just quickly s switch my screens here. So uh, from from the demo itself, what we've learned is, you know, that our principles, this the three A's of ask, analyze, and act. What we've done is we've used forms and SharePoint online and teams to ask. Go uh, reach out to people where they are quite active, either it's internet and teams, or if some people, some organizations don't use teams, but they have internet. So publish your form on the internet and, and get, uh, get them to fill in that form. And you can also send monthly notifications on email as well to ask that question. And then once you have the responses, analyze it and track it uh, using Power Automate, SharePoint Online, Power BI, or Excel. And, and based on your results from your analysis, make sure that you actually act on them. You know, if, if somebody is struggling, if they said they wanted to have a chat with you or things, you know, reach out to them using Microsoft Teams or Outlook and organize a video call and then go uh, record those records those findings inside uh, the central list so that you can actually go and and and, uh, and analyze the trends on how your organization is doing. So uh, with that said, the key takeaways for this session are two things, you know, reuse what you have. Uh, you don't need to, you know, if you were for, for you to launch an employee feedback program in your workplace, you don't need to go and procure a, an expensive uh, product uh, because you already have licenses for Office 365 and Net Promoter Score is actually built into MS Forms. So use that and, and uh, use the power of Power Automate, SharePoint and things to support you with your analyzing and uh, taking action. And talking about that, so always listen, uh, ask, listen and track employee feedback at over, uh, anonymously but over a period of time to, uh, to see how your organization is either improving or not. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it from uh, from the session point of view. So if you have any questions or feedback, please let me know. I'm more than happy to uh, answer them. Also, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be sharing the the templates, the flow temp the flow packages, and the the forms template, and the JSON file for column formatting and all of that that I've used in the demo on ondemand.modernwork.cloud. So if you just go onto the website, you can actually register your interest there, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll share those uh, materials through to you. Any questions there, Laura? Uh, there was a question earlier um, from David Tag. Yeah. Um, if you just open the chat box, you should. Yes, I can see that now. Oh, yes. Thank you. If you're logged in, uh, then it'll take the details of the user. So not anonymous. Is that correct um, for NPS? Uh, so when if if you're not recording the actual uh, name in the in the um, in the actual uh, form itself, uh, you have an option I showed you on the demo where it says that that's actually an anonymous form. Um, but it is still authorizing you from the back end to, to see. Uh, the next thing is, can you show the Power BI interface similar to what you did for forms and flow? Uh, Alan, uh, can you just uh, maybe uh, add a bit more clarity to that? Uh, yeah, you just, you, you demoed sort of the interface and editing experience in forms and flow, but you haven't done that in the Power BI? Yes, yes. So um, so I'll, I'll let me quickly go and see how I can actually show you that. So it is it is very straightforward uh, because that list that we have there, uh, just let me get the Power BI thing. What, we are, what I'm using is the Power BI uh, SharePoint list connector and connecting back to that uh, Connecting back to that uh, SharePoint list, and and then just bringing up that uh, using a a uh, visual um, chat type called Gorge, I think it's called. So let me just bring up the. There you go. Um, so what I've done is I've uh, collected the, the recent sources is the 
not that it's not uh, it's not uh, loading up but you get the idea it's uh, just on the gorge here you can actually go and uh, and uh, what i've done is i've put the enps value as the value and then for and for power bi to work you need especially for the gorge uh, chart type to work you need the max value and min value so we're not collecting that information inside the sharepoint list so i've done a bit of transformation uh, in the back end to actually include those new measures and you also need to, especially for that, uh, remember that I, sh I showed you the um, anything about 10 is good. You can actually set a target value there as well. And the other chart types are pretty standard as well. They they are just uh, line charts and area charts based on the information that you have over the over that period of time. That's that's around uh, Power BI. So I think that's that's uh, all. Uh, do you have any other questions, Alan? Uh, no, I guess from the licensing, you said that you, you obviously need the pro for publishing it. Um, I, I, you do get the, it's like a Power BI free version. Will that allow users to consume that report or view it? Yeah, the Power BI, I think they need to download, they can actually view it through a, a dashboard, um, uh, to, through their des desktop app app. But for you to publish it into Teams or into, into the SharePoint, especially uh, like how you want to do that. Just uh, let me show you. So using the Power BI, uh, um, so uh, the, using the Power BI dashboard, uh, if for you to go and say edit this, you know, for you to put that Power BI report link in here and, and to showcase that to the rest of the organization, you need that Power BI Pro license. And even any anyone who is actually logging onto the site uh, need need uh, need to have access uh, access to to a license as well, and that's why we fall back onto that Excel um, uh, reporting thing. All right, uh, so thanks thanks everybody, thanks for uh, joining in on this uh, session, Lauren. I think uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Okay. That's it. I will end the recording and uh, end the meeting for everyone. Thanks, everyone. Uh, if you have any more questions, reach out to me on my uh, modernwork.cloud or reach out to through organizers, and they will they will uh, uh, get 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 you in touch with me as well. Thank you. Thank you.